Hi everyone, it's Mr Valentine, Head of Art and Photography here at Sandbach High School at Sixth Form College. I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about GCSE Fine Art and I want to start with this really great quote by Picasso. Every child is an artist, the problem is how to remain an artist once they grow up. And I do genuinely believe that. I believe that we're all born with this sort of need to create and make things. And as we get older, we do lose a little bit along the way. And we're here to encourage and nurture that side of you. Um, it is called Fine Art. Um, it's uh, run with AQA. So if you want to have a little look at the specification in more detail, have a look at the AQA website, GCSE Fine Art. It's 60% coursework and 40% exam. It's a practical exam. I'll come back to that later. And our results are outstanding. Year on year, they are outstanding. What will you learn? Uh, you learn lots. Um, you will learn traditional drawing and painting techniques because we don't know what kind of skills you come to us with. Uh, how to analyze the world around you. How to analyze and interpret famous artworks and the art of others. How to develop your ideas independently and be able to discuss your work. We'll learn quite modern techniques such as digital techniques, experimental and non-conventional techniques and processes. Now, once we've gone through the conventional drawing and paint techniques with you, you start to develop more of a sense of individuality and we do encourage that individuality. We want you to use materials that you want to use, work with processes that you feel comfortable with. We want you to be able to look at artists that inspire you. And we've done work with all sorts of materials. You have students who've worked with fabrics, plaster, fat found objects, plastics, resin, stitch, cardboard, absolutely anything you want to work material wise, we encourage that particularly as we get into year 11. And again, some nice examples here of quite traditional drawing and painting techniques, and then the more experimental techniques and processes. It's five lessons over two weeks. Uh, you'll have full use of the departments at lunchtime and after school. There's always a dedicated staff there to look after you, to give you that extra support and tuition. The control test that you do at the end of the exam unit in year 11 will take place in your classroom in a familiar space, not in the main hall with other exams. In the mock exam and the real exam, you will decide on the question and the type of work that you want to create and the artists that you look at. And examples of past questions, such as collections, out of place, light and dark, moments in time and crowds. I'll show you some more examples in a minute. And you're working towards four assessment objectives all the way through both the coursework units and the exam units, which is developing ideas, experimentation, recording your thoughts and ideas and outcomes. It's not all about those final pieces. And here's some, again, some visual um, examples of the kinds of questions and themes and resources that you'll get for the exam. And as you can see, really diverse range of artists and techniques, and you get to choose. So the coursework itself begins on day one in year 10. The minute you walk in, you will start be producing work towards your coursework. There's never any waste. We don't ever redo anything. We just work and refine for the whole of the coursework unit. There will be two projects in year 10. Again, they'll be drawing and painting related with some 3D. Uh, and then in year 11, you will start the mock exam, which will become essentially your third unit of coursework. So you will get lots of opportunities to explore different techniques, processes and artists all the way through your coursework. When you do your mock exam, you will get about 12 weeks to prepare for that. Which is exactly the same as the real exam. You will start your real exam unit in January. And again, I must stress it is, it is a practical exam. It's not a written exam. Obviously, there will be writing in the form of artist research and annotations, but it is a practical exam. Again, you will get 12 weeks to complete prep work leading up to that. And you can see in the, in the examples here, the students will prepare um, trial outcomes and time plans. It will be the most prepared you will be for any exam. You get 10 hours to complete the final outcome. Again, that will be in an art room. Careers still get students and quite a lot of parents actually asking me, well, what can we do with art? And I always say, look, you know, we live in a modern digital age. Everything we look at has been designed and created by a creative mind. But obviously there are those traditional careers as well. We can be painters, sculptors, architects, interior designers. Or we can go down the photography route. We can get into illustration, fashion design, animation and character creation and even TV and film production. And there's a lovely little sort of quote there. 
subject that support, imagination, creativity, innovation, originality, and expression are all aspects that are increasingly important for employees and entrepreneurs alike. So it's not just the creative industries that are looking for creative thinkers and problem solvers. It's every business. And here again, just some more examples uh, of the different strands of careers that you can go into. But again, have a look online, just Google careers in art or careers in the creative industries and look at how many different jobs and careers are out there. Uh, what to expect? Well, we've already talked about the 60% coursework, 40% exam, but all the other opportunities are there as well. There's the vast majority of trips that we go on. We've been to places like New York, Amsterdam, Paris, Tuscany, um, just to name a few. And we do an, uh, an October half-term European trip every year. Okay, We'll take you to London, we'll take you even closer to home, Liverpool, Manchester, but we want you to see some of the most important pieces of artwork ever made. That was what was really life-changing for me, was going to visit these places um, to experience the different cultures, to see the different architecture, and to see some of these really important pieces of artwork. Why would you choose art? Mainly because you enjoy it. That's the main thing, all right? If you're good at it, well, great. I mean, have a word with your teacher. Let's see what they think. I mean, they will be honest with you, but the main thing is, is that you enjoy it, that you want to be given the chance to express your individuality because again, we do encourage that. We encourage you to work independently. We encourage you to work individually and to be able to discuss your ideas with us. And of course, if you're considering a job in the creative industries, okay? If you want to do something like architecture or any, any form of design, you must do GCSE art to start you off. And there's some lovely quotes here from past students, um, but the one that always sticks with me um, is the, the bottom one. I have always loved creating things, and so it felt wrong not to choose art for GCC. And sometimes that is the only excuse we need. Um, well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, again, I'm Mr. Valentine. My email address is dvalentine at sandbatchhigh.co.uk. And I look forward to any questions that you have. Again, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.